Hello guys, welcome back to GD Bots. This is a bot series on to do bot where we'll create tasks, view tasks, and delete. This is part 6 of the series where we'll be connecting the bot with the Azure Cosmos DB. This is a very important part in this tutorial series, so I suggest you. You stay till the end. Let's get started. In the last part, we had seen the working of the Azure Cosmos DB emulator, where we have seen some of the features and how to create a database, a container, and how to add some items. And in this video, we are going to use our bot to connect with this DB and uh, insert some item into it so let me show you the db this is the db which we have created in the last video and we can add a item manually by clicking on new item and just providing the id to it let's say And I'm going to insert a task. And let's save it. And here you see a new item is added. So this all process will be doing it inside the chatbot. Okay. Well, we had created the create task dialog in our last to last video and we have also seen that there is some issue in this because when you come out of the create task dialog the task entered by the user gets lost so because of that we are using the database that's the main purpose so To connect to the database, we can use the sample code provided by the emulator. Uh, since we are using the .NET Core, so we'll be using the sample code provided inside the .NET Core app. I have already downloaded it and kept it here. Cosmos getting started. This contains ready-made code. We just have to copy and paste into our requirement and do some slight modifications to this code. All right. Moving back to the to-do bot. Before connecting our bot to the database, we need to authenticate the user. For our purpose, we can just ask the user if he is a new user or a returning user. If he is a new user, we will be creating a user id for him if he is a returning user we will be asking the user to provide the user id and then we will check whether the user id is correct or not so for that inside our main dialog we will be adding two new tasks the first task we will be adding is user exists step async then user id In the first step, we will be asking the user if he is a new user, returning user. In the second step, we will be generating a new user ID or we will be asking the user to provide the user ID. So let's create the method out of this. We have created both the methods let's feed some code into this one so in order to ask or to give the user to select out of the two option we can give the user in the form of an adaptive card so we'll use the same code which we have written in the intro step just copy paste the whole thing to create adaptive card and paste it inside the first step 
and the options we'll be giving the user is returning user and new user We shall make the method as a sync. All right, this looks fine. Well, in the next step, we will capture the user response. Let's capture the user response to context dot values and user type. We shall give a name as user type and font choice just use a variable Great. Then initially our user ID will be null. Oh, we first need to initialize the user ID as null before assigning the value to it. Then we are checking the condition if it is a returning user dot equals user type then we'll ask the user please enter the user id then we can copy paste the prompt message from create task dialog please enter your user id and even this has to be a sync else now else when it will go when a user has selected the new user option then here we'll have to generate a new user id so before generating uh, let's create a new folder at the project level We'll name it as utilities. Uh, this folder will contain all the external codes which are required for our implementation. And uh, we can create a repository class so that we can keep our reusable code inside that. Let us create a new property which uses the random library uh, will generate a random user id and let's create a new method and the return type is the string because we'll be returning our random user id and what length you want it to generate let's say i will take 
length as six so it will generate a six character long uh, user id for me and what all characters i need to use then return new string uh, I'm using a uh, arrow function over here all right we are done with this method and let's call this inside our main dialog so what we have to do here first we have to generate the user id then we have to check whether the generated user id is not already present in the database so for that we'll use a do while loop we assign the user id repository and we'll have to import this repository dot random string and let's say i want to generate seven character long user id and in the while part so here comes a condition so condition will be we'll have to call the database like we have to query the database by sending the user id and return a value true or false if value is present in the database it will return true correct so this condition will become true and so it will rerun this do while loop if the value is not present in the database it will return false then we have our final user id so at the later point of time i'll be writing the while condition and yeah here so before that uh, once a user id is generated we'll have to store the user id inside our user data class so we have the user class let's create a new property so the shortcut is prop and uh, static string user id all right we have created a new property and we'll be assigning that property user dot user id equal to user id Then we need to inform the user by sending in message that um, this is your user id and uh, please make a note of that and the next message we are will be sending the user id And finally, we'll move to the next step. Since we don't have anything to pass as an option in our next step, we'll pass as null. Great. Now, this part is done. We have another thing to do in the returning user if condition we have asked the user to provide the user id what we can do instead of going to the next step and verifying the user id we can verify the user id in this step only uh, by using the dialog id and validation for that we'll have to come on top and declare a new property 
here we initialize our property to keep a track of the dialog id and the value which we will provide is user validation dialog and inside our constructor we'll have to declare a new text prompt with this dialog id and we'll provide the user validation dialog id and the method which it has to call for validating the user id coming to the text prompt instead of this text prompt we'll have to use that dialog id and at the last we can create a new method for the user validation great now we'll have to capture the user id provided for that let's use a new variable and it will come inside the prompt context and recognized value then let's inform the user that uh, we are checking if user is already present or not please wait it's always a good practice that uh, if we are doing some api operation sometimes it takes time to return the response so it's always keep the user informed that uh, please wait while i validate your details let's call the method which we'll be using to validate if the user id is present or not let's keep the condition as empty as of now because we haven't written the code for that let's suppose if the method returns the value as true that this user id is present in the database then let's inform the user that your details are verified then we assign the user dot user id with this user id since details are verified and we return true else and we return false all right this has to be a wait okay let me first explain you what this method does so when the user clicks on the existing user or the returning user it comes to this part and it asks please enter use user id then it checks the dialog id and it checks that we need to verify the user by going to this method the control comes to this method and we capture the response provided by the user and we check the details by calling the database query methods that we'll be writing later and if the user or id is present in the database then we just say your details are verified you're good to go we return true 
if suppose the user id is not verified then we send that this entered user id is not found please enter the correct id so what it does it return false and it moves back to here since we have not returned a retry prompt for this one so basically it will not ask again it will just think that the user has to provide something some input has to be provided again actually it goes into a loop till the user provides a correct user id it comes back again to user validation and checks that if it is again false then again user gives that till the correct user id is provided fine now here we need to provide the condition for the database and even in user validation we need to provide the condition for the database so let's go ahead and write that code we go to utilities create a new class file and we name this as cosmos db client basically we just have to copy paste the code which is provided in the sample so let's copy the properties uh, we have copied all the properties which were mentioned in the sample code and we don't require the main uh, if you have run this code what it does it comes to main then it comes to the get started method then it runs all the methods in a sequence starting from creating the database then creating container then scaling container add items query item replace delete delete database yeah that's what we need is this methods create database create container and add items then query item let's do it let's do it uh, basically we can take this method only directly first let's take this method uh, this method is required to initialize our database to create a connection to our database uh, just ignore the syntax error or the import errors then we copy the create database then create container as well create database create container then we copy the add items to container this one is the main one where we'll be adding our task to the database and finally we will also need the query items i guess for this video only this methods would be more than enough now let's fix the error in our sample code you have noticed that the credentials are coming from the app.config file where it has kept in a key value pair similarly we will get the credential from app settings.json file so the first credential which we need to put is the endpoint uri and let's use the same value which is mentioned in the sample code Uh, the good thing about the sample code is that it comes pre-configured with the primary key as well as the endpoint URL URI. If you notice this and this primary key will be the same key available on the user interface of this uh, Azure Cosmos DB emulator. then the second is primary key 
let's use the same credentials Well, uh, next, what all we need? Uh, coming back to Cosmos DB client, we have we are getting the endpoint URI and the primary key from the app settings or JSON. So here we don't require. Just remove those two properties. And let's import Cosmos client. Uh, in order to import, uh, we'll have to install this uh, NuGet package. All right, uh, the new get package is installed. That's why it is not showing that import error. Next part, even the database ID as well as the container ID should come from the app settings or JSON. We should not hard code this value as well because in future it may change. And when let's check our database id that is to do bot db and the next one is container id and in our case what's the container id to do task great so since we have added this to in our app settings rotation, we'll remove from here. Now we are only left with three properties Cosmos client, database, and the container. In the get started demo, it is throwing us an error for endpoint URI, primary key, and uh, Let's comment this out. The reason I am commenting this out because we just have to create a database and create a container. Uh, don't get confused with the name create. If the database is already created, then it will select that. Otherwise, it will create a new one. If the container is already created, it will take the container otherwise it will create a new container well since we have moved the endpoint URI and the primary key to our configuration file let's use the parameters for this one string endpoint URI and even the primary key will get it from the parameter Well, this two is fine. Coming to create database. Even here, since we have moved the database ID, we'll have to get it from the parameter. And in the create container, again, get it from here. If you notice, this is the partition key in our case the partition key is task so let's get the partition key we can also get the partition key from the configuration file partition key and just replace with this partition key and inside our app settings or json create another coming back to the cosmos db client let's move to the add items part okay before going there let's move to the query item in the query item let's do it manually over here so this is the query select star from container c where uh, c dot id equal to uh, let's take any id so 
so this will return me only the records which contains this id let's run this one we have two three i guess how many one two three five records for this so we'll have to use this query here and get the number of records if the number of records is more than zero then we can confirm that the user id is present uh, for you not to get confused let's change the method name check new user id so this check new user id async method will be called from here in the while condition because we need to check if the generated user id is not already present if it is present then it will generate a new user id and let's replace this method c dot id equals to in order to use the variable let's use the dollar sign and provide the user id and in the parameter let's add the user id we have written our query and now it's time for us to replace this family with the to do task as you already know the cosmos db returns the result in a json format so we would need a model class so that we can deserialize our json response if you look at the sample code provided they already have a model class that is family we'll create a similar model class for our container uh, let's copy the properties used by this in the utilities folder we create a new class file we name it as to do task this is a model class we are creating and the other things which we don't require is this <coughs> we just need the id and the task just import the newton soft great since we have created our model class let's go to the cosmos db client and replace all the family with the to do task uh, to quickly do it just click on control f and uh, provide the family so wherever family is there make sure you select this both the options it has to ma match the case and so it has to match the whole world then then just click on this drop down and replace it with the to do task what it does in the current document wherever family is there it will replace all with the to do task uh, if you want to go step by step you can click on this replace next or if you want to do it at once just replace all great so where were we in the query item check new user id we have replaced the to do task and let's replace this as well to do task all right and since okay while query result selector has more result then we get the result then we check in this case what it does it just prints out that uh, json 
we just don't require this part what we can do we just have to do if current result set dot count is greater than zero what does this mean that the user id is present we return true else we return false and for any other case just return false as you see it is giving us an error because we have to make the return type of the method as boolean just hover over it fix return type this automatically changes the return type to task bool then we don't require this statement because we are not uh, putting the return json into a list because we are just only checking the count well next coming back to the main add items to container uh, as of now let's comment this out because this is the last step which we'll be doing any more errors yes we have the create database all right since we have used the parameters we need to pass the argument while calling the method and here we pass the database id and for container what we have used we have used the container id and partition key now let's add these two as well in the parameters okay we need to add the container id as well now it's fine and just ignore the application name as far now we are good now let us explore how to get the credentials from the app settings.json inside our code for that we go to the main dialog at the top we declare the property we declare the i configuration even in the constructor we write as i configuration great and here we assign the value configuration with configuration this gets me the value which were present in the app settings or json inside the configuration but before that we have to since we are using this configuration service we need to register in the startup to register we just write as services Well, we register this service i credential provider and configuration credential provider with this we can use the i configuration inside our code and get the credential from the app settings for json well earlier we have left the while condition let's fill this out before filling this condition we need to create an object for the cosmos db client we have created the object and in the constructor we just have to assign this
all right now with this we can use the cosmos db client inside the main dialog again <coughs> here also we are using the cosmos db client for that also we need to register inside the startup great coming back to the main dialog and coming back to the while condition cosmos db client dot we can see that the check new user id is not coming up let me check what's the issue going back to the check new user id okay this is private let's make it public check new user id and what all things we need to pass user id that's the first thing we need to modify few things in the check new user id so we cannot directly call and run this query first we need to create the connection between database and the container to do that we need to call the get started method this method already creates a connection and connects to the database and the container so let's call the method before running the query and this requires endpoint uri next primary key database id container id partition key i guess we have all the arguments present but why it's throwing an error because we have not declared this anywhere and this has to be a wait let's declare it in the parameters and point uri it has to be string let's copy this directly all right then going back to main dialog it will throw us an error and let's see what all things are required now it requires the endpoint uri let's copy the key which it is using it is using cosmos endpoint uri to get that we use the configuration and the key that's all the next one is primary key We have added all the arguments. Just we make sure that it is in the same order. Let's check user ID, endpoint URI, primary key, database ID, Cosmos container ID, and the partition key. We are good. Next, coming back to the user validation. Here also we have left the condition. We'll be calling the same one. We can copy paste all the arguments from here. So far, so good. Now, what is the only thing is left? In the create task dialog, we need to replace the summary code by adding the task into the database before that we need to fix the method 
for adding the task to the database. Let's uncomment the add items to container. Okay, let's study the code to do task and try catch then to do task. Okay, so they have used two different families. We don't we don't require the second part of the code. We just delete it. And inside this one, we don't have that much key value pairs. We don't require this as well. We have only the ID and the task. And the ID, just pass it from the parameter user ID. And the task. And then the parameter, just give it a string user ID and string task. All right. Then replace this Anderson family with the to do task. Same thing. We have the Anderson family, and this will replace it with the to do task. Replace all. Then coming back to the Anderson family response, this also we need to replace. So to task response. All right. Item response to do task. This looks fine. And uh, the partition key is not last name. It is the task. Then it is if the task is already present with the same user ID, then it is throwing us this message that item in database with ID already exists. And we have the catch block. Inside the catch block, it does the main task of adding the item into the database. Here also we, we need the task. Created item in database with the ID. Yeah, this is the method. Yeah, this is the statement which gets me the task created inside the database. So far, so good. So, how do we find out that the task is not added into the database? For that, what we can do, we can create a return type of integer and here we return minus one what this means that if the task is not added in the database return minus one if it is added return plus one that's it then we call this method inside the create task dialog and where do we call after showing the user the task he has provided we can give another for loop let's just copy paste the same for loop and before the for loop we give a response to the user Please wait while I add the task to the database. Into the database. And instead of sending the task back to the user, we can call if. All right. Now, the issue is we don't have the Cosmos DB client declared in this create task dialog. For that, 
go to the main dialog pass the argument for the create as dialog we pass the cosmos db client we pass the same object and in the create as dialog we create a same property at the class level and in the constructor we add these parameters and we assign we need to import the cosmos db client yeah now yes now we can use the cosmos db client inside the create task dialog similarly in future if you want to use some objects which are present in the main dialog we just pass that object while calling that particular dialog in this way you can use the same object yeah coming back to if condition await cosmos db client and then now yeah here also we don't have that method because i think it will be private let's make it public add items now if you notice in the cosmos db client we are not again creating a creating the database or the container the reason is this is the same object which we are passing if you notice in the main dialog in the first let's say yeah in the second step we have the user id step here we are calling that method and we are initializing these variables in that step itself so again we don't have to initialize these variables again or these properties again that is why we will be not be calling that get started inside the add items here we have only two parameters user id and task let's pass them and the user id is already present in the user dot user id and the task is this one user details dot task here now since this is returning one or minus one we are checking if it is equal to minus 1 that means the task is not added with this we inform the user that task is not added a white is throwing us an error cannot be applied to append of type string and int uh, add items to container inside add items to container async yeah we have the integer itself but what's the issue okay this has to be here because this is the condition we are checking with the minus one all right and here we need to inform the user that task is not added then we provide the task which is not added and we concatenate already present okay let's surround this one with the single code so that it will be visible clearly then after finishing this operation let's again inform the user that the add task operation is completed
I guess we are pretty much done here with everything. Let's finally run the code. Before running, let me just clear the items which are already present. We have cleared all the items from the container and we don't have anything inside that. Let's run the code. Our bot is ready and let's go to the emulator, connect to the bot. We have the welcome message. We have the adaptive card showing up. In the first case, since we don't have the user in the database, we can click on the new user. According to our logic, this creates a new user ID for us and it shows that user ID. We have the user ID. Let's copy this. Okay, let's create a new task. Let's create a single task for now. Schedule a meeting with boss. I'll keep it as no, I don't want to add new task. Great. Here are the tasks you provided. Schedule a meeting with boss. Please wait. The data task operation is completed. Thank you. Now let's check and refresh. The container and there it is scheduled a meeting with boss amazing right now let's add let's click on the returning user and provide the user id please wait your details are verified and let's create a task in this case, I'll create uh, two tasks. Call mom. Yes. Call dad. And two tasks is enough. We have the task and the operation is completed. Let's check, refresh. There it is. With the same user ID, we have the three tasks added. Now, let's add the same task which we have already added. We provide the user ID. And create task. And call mom. This task we have already added. No. Now what it does, we have provided call mom and the task call mom already present. So it doesn't add or overwrite that task which is already present. Do you notice something unusual in this? This returning user and new user is coming again and again. Because since I have, since this is the current context and I am the single user, this message should only be coming once in the beginning, not after that. So to fix this, we go to the main dialog and this everything we put it in the if condition if user id user dot user id is equal to equal to null when it is null then only i should get that adaptive card else return await 
step context dot we move to the next and we don't have anything to pass as options we pass null all right and the next step also we don't have to ask the user to provide the user id or check the validation because we have already done in the first step this part also everything should come inside that if condition which we have already done in the first step if user dot user id equal to equal to null then only we should ask this question else we move to the next step just copy and paste the last return statement now you would be thinking where is the initial state correct in the first state user id will already always be null for that for the new user we go to the dialog and welcome bot inside the on members added we just make the user dot user id as null because whenever a new user is added the always the user id will be null let's rerun this restart the conversation now you see i am the new user and this is showing me let's create a new user in this case the user id will be populated so let's create a new task and then let's see complete this operation go to picnic all right now you see that the returning user and new user adaptive card is not coming earlier it was showing now now let's restart the conversation and we have the returning user and new user coming up now let us test the functionality of the user validation i have the user if i give a wrong user id let's say i'll instead of s i'll put file please wait while i validate the user id you entered is not found because i have purposefully made a mistake and if i again give a wrong user id it tells me the same message again till i provide the correct user id and now i'll provide the correct user id great your details are verified let's create a task take a day off and let's see in the database if this task is added and we have the new user also and the old user as well we have the two users with their respective task added so this comes to the end of this part and i hope you would have understood most part of it like when you do practice when you do a regular practice then only you will be able to understand the flow and how you want to achieve a sequential conversation correct well in the next part we'll go with the viewing task details so whatever we have added in the first part like whatever we have added the task today in the database in the next part we'll be seeing all those tasks when the user clicks on view task all right thank you all see you in the next video